What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. Big, big weekend. Lots going on this weekend. Lots coming up, too, so I hope you're getting out there and getting ready for all the things that you could be doing or should be doing or will be doing with Ham Radio. Today, we're going to be talking about ferrites. Uh, Ferrites and toroid is kind of a, a name to go along with it, but you know, they're pretty much the same thing and we're going to talk a little bit about that among other things so enjoy the memes as we kick things off We got some new memes in the Discord meme chat. I added some of them, but I don't know if they made the, the rotation. I usually put it on random and just let them fly. But man, I do love me some ham radio memes. If you want to join uh, Discord, add some more of those. The link is in the description. All right, let's kick it off. Thanks again. And hey, how's it going, everybody? I am Josh, KI6NAZ, here from the Ham Radio Crash Course. Thanks for clicking that video and watching with us live, kind of like... It's a it's it's a ham meetup, if you will. Hopefully, you're having fun with ham radio. We got a big Wii 4 DX POTA event going on right now. That is the Ham Radio Adventures Group. We'll talk about that in a second. But I uh, just wanted to get a shout out to them if you're if you're interested in trying to make a POTA contact right now. They are on 20 meters and uh, 20 meters 14.290. If you want to make a contact, okay. Steve Eden says greetings from the greetings from Lake of the Ozarks. Right on. People are talking about their favorite type of ham. Prosciutto's good. I like spec. Um, that is also a very good ham. <laughs> Oof Radio. It's both a ham radio and a charcuterie uh, based based live stream. So thanks, everybody, for coming out. All right. So what are we talking about today? We're going to be talking about ferrites and why you or which ferrites you might want to deploy on your ham radio station, wherever it is, portable, at home, whatever and and why what what is the point of it why would you do it all that fun stuff so a couple things before we kick off the fun here uh this is the spots right now for we 4 dx where are they let's see if they still show up let's get that refresh to get the exact exact where they're at right now uh let's see parks on the air is a really fun ham radio event they'll probably respawn in a little bit but 14.290 is where you want to be really fun ham radio event it's like point system you, you go to a park you set up your radio you make contacts and everybody gets points if you make a contact with them you get points if they make a contact they get points too so great stuff uh if you want to follow along with what we're up to hamradiocrashcourse.com that is where you can find the podcast uh today's or last podcast episode was scoring bonus points and how to maximize kind of your field day time if you're going to be active with field day this would be something to check out and if you're curious all of our merch amazon recommendations our buy sell trade group on Facebook, as well as our discount and affiliates are all on that website. Signal Stick, Wakako, Peak Design, PNW Spot, uh, and the links get updated all the time. So with that said, we got a new shirt. Here it is. Let's refresh. Hamtactical.com. Somebody said, actually a lot of people said, hey, uh, if you're going to do a field day shirt, get it out early so we can get it. So here it is, the field day 2021 shirt. Uh, that is a that is Leia's rendition of a DX Commander that she put up there. I think she did a fantastic job. So that is the Field Day 2021 shirt for the Ham Radio Crash Course. So it's up there now if you want to go to hamtactical.com. The link is in the description, and you can check that out. Okay, okay. Where is my... Oh, I lost... There it is. Okay. The other thing we're talking about, and uh, I've, I've got something fun to show you right now. Uh, before we kick that off, though, I want to mention POTA Parks Plaque Event. Okay. The weekend of the July 17th and July 18th, there is a whole event on making contacts, doing different things for that weekend. So most contacts as an activator, most contacts as a hunter, most voice contacts as a hunter and an activator, et cetera, et cetera. And you can go all the way down. Rovers, the one who gets the most uh, parks activated, chasers, all that fun stuff. So parks on the uh, on the air, again, really fun ham radio hobby and a really good way to prepare yourself for field day which is the fourth weekend every june and so it's coming up pretty quick somebody asked what am i drinking today i have a 
Modern Times Fruitlands Mai Tai Edition. So I'll pour this really quick, and I've got something special that some of the folks at Parks on the Air made for us to view today. But uh, if I remember correctly, no, this doesn't. The other Fruitlands have like a really orange, pinkish color to it. Anyway, Fruitlands are kind of like a, a goes, a uh, bit of a sourish taste to them. Anyway, hey guys, check this out. I got something special. Watch this now, and then we'll kick off uh, the slides here for talking about ferrites and handling RFI and EMI. Hello, Ham Radio Crash Course viewers. You've got Vance, November 3, Victor Echo Mike here. I'm one of the volunteer developers for POTA. And if you don't know what POTA is, you will in, in just a second. But I wanted to first thank Josh for giving me a few minutes of his show to come on and, and tell you about an event coming up this summer that, that I'm very passionate about. So for those of you that don't know, POTA is a, is a um, an activity, Parks on the Air, and it encourages folks to basically get out in parks and operate portable and make contacts. One of the things that I do, on, in addition to being a developer for POTA, is I, I coordinate our summer Support Your Parks and Plaque event. So that's right, this summer you're going to have a chance to win some pretty awesome plaques uh, just for participating in POTA during the weekend of July 17th and 18th UTC. So let's take a quick peek at the, the plaques that folks won last year so you can see just how nice these plaques are. We've got plaques for most contacts for an activator and a hunter. There's plaques by mode, so there's plaques available for voice contacts, CW contacts, and digital contacts. Uh, and then we have a rover plaque for folks that want to try to get out and activate as many different parks as they can. Um, you might be hard pressed to, to beat our record. Uh, Justin, KN4MQR, activated 52 parks in two days during last year's event. So I'll be impressed if anybody can beat Justin's record. Now, I don't know if he's going to be going uh, to try to break his own record this year or not, but, uh, but if you want to have a run at that one, that ought to be a lot of fun. Uh, then there's a chaser plaque, so the folks that contact the most unique parks during the weekend. And then lastly, we also have a club plaque that's As going you're watching up. this, so, look at Vance's um, shack. Okay. I really hope to hear you on the air Dance that weekend to try to get some of those plaques. And, uh, and, and it's really easy. If you haven't participated in POTA, um, even if you're not going to be an activator, even just staying home, make contacts from home, log on to POTA.us and check the spotter, see who's on the air, and, and just make some contacts. And, and maybe you can, uh, can qualify for one of, the, one of the Hunter Awards without ever leaving home. Um, in fact, let's show you just how easy that is. Look at the shack, guys. So the coax on the right, you saw that, but look at the left. He's got like a, a mixer in the wall. That's one of the most like legit shacks I've seen in a while. Not a big space either, just really well thought out. November 3, Victor Echo Mike. QSL, this is November 3, Victor Echo Mike. You good 5-7 uh, here in Central PA. Thanks so much for the 5-7 into Central Congratulations, Pennsylvania. Douglas. You are not a 5-8 into Park Kilo. 1267. Okay, thank you for the 5-8. So He's the showing five an five example five of activation right now. This is a video three. talking about an upcoming event. QSL, thanks, uh, thanks for the the second one there. Whiskey Nine, Tango, Papa, Juliet. Hope you two have fun out there. N three, V E M. Will do. Uh, special thank you. Uh, uh, we'll get the 
73 and 3 VEM. All right, well, I don't know about you, but I am super pumped for July 17th and 18th, uh, and that's July 17th and 18th UTC. So, uh, zero hundred hours on the 17th to 23.59.59 on the 18th. Should be a lot of activity going on in the parks. Last year we had uh, 100 and some odd activators at several hundred different parks. There was like 5,000 different chasers that contacted those activators for you know Hold the on, range guys, of 20,000 some contacts. Awesome. So it's going to be an exciting weekend. Um, and in fact, I'm actually so pumped for the weekend that I, I can't wait. I got to pack my stuff up right now and, and, and get ready to go. go I'm, I'm pumped. He's going to exit stage right. Watch where he goes. Where he goes around. Look. He's got... Look at the right side. Look how he's plumbed it. That is how he hides all the wires. This man is insane. This is the coolest shack. Look what he's done, guys. The thought. The meticulous nature of planning. Look at this. I... I'm in, I'm in awe. This is awesome. Gets his family involved. Nicely done, fans. That's right, make the kids put the heavy box in the car. Just so good. Nicely done, man. It's very fun. If anybody's not excited for Parks on the Air now, I don't know what to tell you. Kids can always go on Photolea if they just sit down and play the radio for a while. Nicely done, Vance. Right on. Okay. Well, I'm coming back. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, Vance, you did a great job. Everybody, I'm very excited for the POTA weekend, so make sure you get involved with that. Hey, we have a Discord giveaway going right now. If uh, you want to get your chance to win one of three Signal Stuff, Signal Stick antennas, go to the Discord link in the bottom. Join us there. Click the party horn on the giveaway uh, chat room. There are two posts for signal sticks, so we're giving away three signal sticks. We're giving one away in 10, 20 minutes, 15 minutes about, and then there'll be another one at the end of the show where we give away two. So make sure you get over to that and do it now. Okay. Uh, wanna show, <laughs> I want to show this off. Some of you that follow me on Instagram already saw that. That is a Gonset communicator. Woo, look at that. Look at that beast. Gonset communicator, that is a six meter transceiver. They were produced in the 50s and 60s. This one is really just a, a shack uh, candy uh, radio, but isn't that cool looking? I think that's super awesome. I really like it. Uh, yeah, okay. Cool, cool. We'll get back to that in a little bit. All right, so we're talking about ferrites or toroids for EMI and RFI suppression. We hear, many have heard the term ferrites, and you've probably noticed on your plugs, there's a little cylinder that goes around the plug. Uh, those are ferrites, and that's commonly used to reduce noise on audio equipment. Obviously, we do it for radio. Some sensitive electronics all require a little bit of help as far as suppressing, co suppressing common mode currents. And that's really what these are all about. At least that's the topic of today. We'll hit some of the other things you can do with toroids, but um, really, that's what we're talking about is the suppression of common mode currents. I've talked a little bit about this already, given a little bit of a background on what common mode currents are, why we do what we do in the ballon or uh, selecting a ballon and un-un for your ham shack talk. 
if you have a dipole or an NFED antenna of some kind, you probably should run a ballon or a toroid of some kind. It will make your life a little bit easier. You'll you'll have a little bit uh, more fun. Hopefully, it'll it'll drop your noise a little bit, and it'll make your antenna perform more to how it was built um, overall. So that's all a good thing. And today we're specifically going to be talking about the characteristics of ferrites and toroids and why you should pick one over the other. With that said, I will hit common mode currents just a little bit. Common mode currents are not opposed by another current that is spaced in close proximity to each other. So they are just free to radiate, um, and they couple to your feed lines, to your USB cables. Common mode currents will basically try to adhere themselves uh, onto anything that acts as an inductor. An inductor, right, in this case would be an antenna line, a feed line, something with you know, some piece of, of metal, basically, a conductor uh, that, can, that those co common mode currents can connect to. When receiving these common mode currents, uh, they'll enter your radio and appear as though it's RF from the antenna. So the common mode currents will actually get into your radio if they couple to the shielding of your coax and make you think, make your radio think, that you're actually receiving legit radio frequencies. Legit radio frequencies are called differential mode currents, and these are where you have equally and equal and opposite signals going down, you know, one leg or the other leg of your feed line or your antenna if you're using balance line. So those work a little bit differently than common mode because they're equally opposed by another current going in the opposite direction. Common mode just flies everywhere and couples to both. It will couple to anything. So if it gets into your radio, it'll, it'll cause a big problem for you and, and make your noise go up uh, a lot. And that's really what we're talking about today. In other words, we want to get rid of common mode currents. We want to excise them from our system as much as possible. That will help uh, lower the noise floor. Why you want to lower the noise floor just in your ambient radio ambient radio space with where there isn't a signal. You're not receiving somebody talking or digital or Morse code. The reason why you want to do that is so that your noise floor is at an appreciable level that if a very weak station came in and they're just a little bit above the noise, you'd still be able to hear them. If you have an S5 noise level, uh, you're not going to be able to hear them. They're going to be below this common mode noise that is choking your radio, right? So that's kind of why we want to do what we do. Please consider, link is in the description as well, during the YouTubers Ham Fest, Ham Radio TV did a fantastic video on station grounding. Station grounding is probably going to be one of the more important things you can do to bring the noise level down and to help the signals rise above the noise. Proper shack rounding is going to be paramount. Sure, the use of a ferrite, uh, a toroid, is going to help in some cases, but the real effective thing you can do is get proper grounding to your shack. A lot of people, particularly like if they're portable people, parks on the air people, we don't really use you know advanced ground or proper ground. Nobody's really driving in a ground stake. Some people do for field day. I know that to be true. Uh, but do keep in mind that that is what you should be doing, particularly when you're at home, is to strive to get a really good ground solution uh, for your radio. So that's my caveat to kind of kick all this off is that you really do owe it to yourself, your radio, the fun times you'll have with radio if you do go ahead and, uh, and do some proper grounding. <clears throat> all right, so what is a toroid or ferrite? Well, toroids are made up of ferrites. Ferrites is a mixture of iron oxide and then one or more metals like uh, manganese or zinc, nickel, or magnesium. These are generally pressed into some kind of shape and then heated in a kiln, almost like a ceramic in, in nature. In fact, I've, I've got a couple of them here I'll show you. Uh, these are two toroids on the left. Sorry, those are ferrites. The half dome little plasticky one here is a ferrite snap-on choke 
and those are used for electronics those are used for wires or you can't really unplug them or they're in a tough place and you would just kind of wrap around them snap them shut the toroid is the donut and those are what you'd use if you wanted to say pass your coax through it multiple times before entering your radio to knock off those common mode currents hey christiana thanks so much uh, for the super chat it says josh just got my ham shacks or my ham sticks and chameleon spider today Ooh, very good. Christiana, uh, thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate the support. That's a great way to support the channel. I appreciate it. Uh, Christiana is a Patreon uh, supporter, or she might be a member of the YouTube. And I posted a video over there that is not ready for prime time yet. So um, she saw something and she made a comment about it. And I'm glad you got your hamsticks. That's part of the reason why that video hasn't come out yet. So cheers to you. Thank you so much. Ah, very good. All right. Toroids are generally loops, though, like that donut that we saw, right, as I already mentioned, and then the snap-on ferrites we use in situations where it's not applicable to use a big honkin' donut toroid like that. And just a, a pro tip on, on using toroids and maintaining and keeping them safe because they are kind of a ceramic. Yeah, or they're, they're, they behave similar to a, to a ceramic. If you bump one, they'll crack, uh, possibly break completely. So a lot of people will wrap them in electrical tape, uh, do things to protect it so that if it takes a bump or something, it's not just going to shatter on you completely. So keep that in mind. All right, so what do they do? We always say, when in doubt, choke it out, right? That was, uh, that's the <laughs> quote I came up with. Don't know if it's a great quote, but uh, it's definitely what I say. So ferrites, when they're encompassing an inductor like a coax or USB wire or something like that, um, will add impedance to high frequency signals and that is common mode currents basically so what we try to do is add multiple loops of the inductor through the toroid or on the ferrite the snap-on ferrite so that we get multiple multiplications of that impedance that is being added by the ferrite Okay, the more passes the inductor takes through the ferrite, the greater the impedance, the more common mode current will get knocked off of your of your line. Case in point, we're going to be talking about the mix types and the physical makeup of these toroids. And generally, if you're, uh, I'd say 12 wraps and up on your coax through a toroid, you're probably getting the maximum attenuation that you can get on them. So keep that in mind as we go through it. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. And I, I did uh, want to cite altium.com uh, for that image. And the link is in the description that talks about specifically what ferrites do. If you want a deeper dive in reading. Okay, so how to use ferrites? I kind of already described it. These are some of the many ferrites I have in my shack. The first one with the circle, that is the snap-on type, the one that I just showed you. And that's a USB cable that's wrapped like as many times as I could get it wrapped around on one of those halves. And then I just slam the gate shut on it and, and that's, uh, that's all I have to do. I wanna test something really quick. Does this work yet? Let's see. I don't think it's working. By the way, I will mention, we'll be doing a Discord after chat. So if you're interested in following along, uh, we always have a little bit of fun after I, I live stream to Twitch. We'll be taking live questions, voice questions, text questions. It did work. Ha, it did work. That's great. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, so uh, join us over there. It should. It's always a lot of fun. A lot of YouTubers come out, a lot of smart people that know more than me that can answer very specific questions. So if you've got a dying question, consider joining us on the Discord. And a reminder, we're seven minutes out from the first drawing of a Signal Stuff signal stick so if you have not already go take that link in the description to join us at discord and the link is right there that the bot just posted thanks bot so simply wrap the coax as many times as you can through the donut type toroid uh, donut type take care though and this is a very important part when you're talking about coax this is not a game of get the get the coax through it and tighten it down torque that sucker down you don't want to do that that is the worst thing you can do Coax is a shield, an outer shield, with a non-conductor, non what am I thinking? An insulator. I know there's a better term for it, but um, there's basically a non-resonant insulator. Non-whatever. I'm, I'm a little tired. I slept like two hours before, uh, before this, and you never take a nap and you wake up and you're still tired. Dielectric. Dielectric. That's what I was thinking of. I knew I just needed to digress for a second to pick it back up. So... Then there's a center pin. Center pin, a dielectric, and then a shield, and then the outer insulation, the, the jacket, if you will. 
If you take coax and you really bend it, you put a tight crimp on it, what you're doing is you're actually merging the center pin closer to the shield so far that you could actually get a short. We definitely don't want that, and you definitely don't want that to be um, something that was done because you were putting too tight a loops on your coax going through a toroid. So what I recommend you do is go look up the, co the coax type you have. There will be a spec sheet that tells you what the turn radius is. And just make sure you're not going beyond that, an inch, two inch, whatever. And in some cases, you can just kind of go on the safe side and just kind of make uh, hold the toroid and just make big loops through it, almost like you're coiling the coax through it, and, and that'll protect it too. It should give you the same amount of impedance to common mode currents if you do it that way but just keep in mind that that, that could be a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a effect there ghost man dka join the discord to get into the giveaway join the giveaway chat which is going to be on the left hand side and then click on the signal stuff signal sticks party horns um, each post it's kind of like a reaction party horn if you click them then you'll be in on the contest okay so here's the types of ferrites they're referred to by mix numbers, and the mix is basically the mixture of the metallic material in addition to the iron oxide. We generally use mix 31 for amateur radio, at least I do, uh, when it comes to RFI and EMI suppression. That's why I've got that red box around it. You can see all the details just from this one little line, and this comes from Palomar Engineers. Shout out to Palomar Engineers. I'm not affiliated with them, but they give everybody a discount that buys from them. They sell toroids. They sell balans and ununs. If you use HRCC73 at checkout, you can get a discount. So type 31, which looks uh, just like this. It's an iron oxide donut. That's a type 31 donut. In fact, I'll leave it right there. It has a permeability of 1500, which we'll talk about 15, uh, permeability in a second, and an RFI EMI common mode suppression range of 1 megahertz through 300 megahertz. So great. That means that between the frequencies of 100 and 300, it'll take care of higher frequency common mode currents that are coming through. So that's, a, that's something to keep in mind, something that's important. Uh, the the breakup here is... Uh, MN and ZN is magnezine, mag, magnet. <laughs> what was it? Magna. <laughs> I just lost it. See, it's, this is tough, man. Ma manganese. God, why? Manganese and zinc. And then the uh, the NI is nickel and zinc. So that's the metallic makeup that is mixed in with those with that mixture. So other people use 43s. Anything that's a zinc and nickel has a specific ham radio use that we'll talk about in a little bit. But you can see that the frequencies start to shift up as you go down in mix types. So if you're interested in doing HF radio, specifically HF, type 31 is what you want to use. Okay? Makes sense, right? I hope that makes sense. It's pretty simple. We could have just started and ended the whole stream here. In fact, I'll, I'll just play you out. Maybe I'll play you out some memes. There you go. That's the end of the... Go use Type 31 for HF. <laughs> play the song. Should I play the song? Now you know it's... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, so am I plagued with common mode currents? How do I know? How do I know that I need these ferrites and toroids? Everybody tells me I need uh, ferrites and toroids, but, but how do I know? How do I tell? We're going to do a bit of a demonstration right here. So... Bear with me. We're going to flip over here. Uh, we should be able to see everything if I do this. Great. Okay, you are looking at my uh, 7610. I have two antennas connected to my 7610, a receiving loop on the right-hand side and a my step IR on the left-hand side. The receiving loop is, is less susceptible to EMI and RFI uh, problems, noise-related issues. Step IR, though, is a dipole, and it's not very high off of the ground. So I do have EMI and RFI that I'm, I'm always chasing down. And the waterfall is what you're seeing of uh, the first antenna. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. Here's the experiment. All right. So this uh, choke, this filter, I have connected to my antenna switch to my step IR, and this goes into my, my RF chain for my radio. What I'm going to do, and this is just a, uh, de again, a demonstration. This isn't in a be-all, end-all way to tell if you've got RFI issues, but keep an eye on the left-hand side needle, the, uh, the one that's illuminated with the bright white. I'm going to pull back the collar, the shield connection for the coax. I'm going to keep spinning until it's off of the connector, right? 
And then I'm going to just jiggle it a bit so that the outer piece here, there's a little bit of a gap. What happened to the needle? The needle fell way, way down. Look at that. It went from a 3.5 to 4 S units of noise uh, down to, you know, 1, right? Let's make sure I've got a connection there. So yeah, pretty pretty horrendous uh, amount of amount of common mode currents. So that means that that S5 noise is coming through the shield of my antenna. That is the common mode currents. So not good, right? Okay, we are almost about to get to the point of where we're doing a giveaway for the on the Discord side. So let me let me see if I can pull that up really quick. Or at least I'll tell you who won. It's going to tell us here in a, in a second. 25 seconds. Uh, let's see. <laughs> so hopefully that makes sense. And who do we have that's the winner? W Y M W three W Y M. You won the signal, the first signal stuff signal stick on Discord. So if you're interested in that, uh, go take the link in the description to our Discord group. Join us, and right there at the top, under a welcome announcement, HRCC videos. There's giveaways, and giveaways is where just above uh, the liar liar gift. There's two posts. Click on the little party horn, and you can join. Okay, and you can join both. So congratulations. Okay. So again, pull back the barrel connector. We're, we're pulling the shield away, right? We just want the center pin connecting into the radio, and we want to see what the results are of that. By the way, 20 is looking really bad right now. It's been kind of bad for 20. Last night, really late, 20 was popping. But yeah, we, we need some more sunspots. We need that cycle to come up big time. So basically, we're isolating the shield. That's showing you that um, the difference between the center pin, which should be isolated from common mode, and we know this because of the skin effect. The skin effect is the RF can only ride on the shield. These common mode currents cannot pass through the shield and get into the center pin. So we know that the signals being received by my antenna are at S1, you know, whatever, with, with, some, flux in, with some flux in there. But between my antenna and down to my shack it's picking up this common mode current now that could also be from the antenna right because half of the antenna on my dipole my step ir is a yagi but a yagi is really kind of a dipole if you get right down to it half of that antenna that that element is connected to the shield that's that's how a dipole works so it's possible that the my antenna is also picking up these common mode currents which means and that's kind of the the big trouble here is that means that a lot of these common modes might be wholly unrelated to what's inside your home which is actually the case that i'm dealing with right now um, i have completely gone through my house and snuffed it out of all of all these RFI generators. So I believe now that I am going to have to <laughs> start going door to door and I'll show you what I use when I go out looking for these common mode generators. I, I have it. It's over here. It's a loop. It's a receive loop, but I'll show you in a second. All right, so we mentioned permeability, permeability on the previous slide with the mix types. So permeability is the measure of magnetization of the component or material when a magnetic field is applied to it or in close proximity. These uh, toroids, right, are generally always used in transformers and stuff like that for its permeability values, for how it handles the transfer of the, you know, the AC coming in and the magnetic off the first winding to its magnetic component off the second winding. So the attributes of permeability denotes which type would be good, how high or low the permeability is, if you wanted to use it for a choke, a ballon, or an unun. Generally, the nickel zinc types available for 43, 52, 61, right? If we go back here, that's the guys kind of here in the middle, these nickel zinc guys. Uh, those are generally the types you'd use for balance and ununs, okay? The nickel-zinc type. 
For the manganese type, the manganese zinc, you would use, those would be, again, 31, 75, and 77. Those make good common mode chokes. So why? Well, let's go back. So 31 has a high permeability, and the uh, nickel metal zinc ion, uh, the zinc... <laughs> Nickel zinc has a lower permeability. So the higher the permeability, a bit more effective it is at choking the, the common mode currents, which is what you want. All right. Okay. So a couple of – I just wanted to throw this in there. These often show up. You'll see something called a line conditioner or a line isolator. That should actually be isolator. But you'll see things like this. that They kind of look like – uh, it actually says isolator on there, but you'll you'll find a device that's like, oh, this is an isolator. This is for, you know, um, trying to knock out these these uh, common mode currents on the coax, and and that's kind of what it does, right? I mean, that's that's its job. But at the end of the day, really, like that's just a choke, uh, an RF choke that they've built inside those PVC tubes. So you don't really get a ton more by going through the whole process of you know. Um, not just building it yourself. They charge you a lot of money for things like this, and every company makes them, but just something to keep in mind. Striker K7 IBU asks, did you find a solution to the power meter yet? Uh, it's just got foil on it right now. <laughs> I got to call the power company when I have more time. All right, so this question comes up a lot, a lot, a lot. Somebody will look at their scope, their spectrum analyzer or, you know, whatever. So case in point. My uh, 7610's window here, you're looking at it and you're seeing, well, I've, I see a couple of spurs and then we've got, looks like a upper sideband signal on the right hand side there, but you can see these vertical lines, right? Those are spurs caused by something, a power supply, some RFI generator. And then we just have a really broad banded high ambient noise floor, right? So a lot of times people will sit down and they're like, you know, Josh, how do I find um, this spurious noise emitter and it's you know and then they'll send me a picture of it or they'll they'll play the noise uh they'll send they'll make a video and send me a send me the video the the reality is is that it's all kind of the same stuff i mean one may be more characteristic of like a switching power supply where it's you know going back and forth very very quickly and that kind of shows up as a spike or if you're in an automobile um certain things like alternator noise ignition noise will appear differently particularly if you have a spectrum display a screen that you can look at but the reality is at the end of the day the solution for all of these is kill the power in your home um, and then start going circuit by circuit and and once you've done that once you've gone through and done that whole process it will likely yield either that the noise came from inside the house and you were able to put on a toroid or something like that or just stop using the device when you're playing ham radio uh, and that that can solve the problem or you now have to go out of your home and start looking at some of the other issues now i did oh hey uh gunner renee thank you so much for the super chat he says when looking for spurs use two radios some radios have an internal frequency like a harmonic or a cpu display or something like that that's true but um where i'm going with this is that don't get so caught up with what the screen looks like i guess that's what i want to say Again, uh, yeah, you can look at this and go, wow, yeah, he's got some noise there. Um, boy, I, I, I think we can go track this down. Well, ultimately, the way you track it down is to pull the power off at the mains and go circuit by circuit, right? Go circuit, turn the circuit on, go around with a, a shortwave. If you have if you have a 705, go use a 705, but most people don't. You can use a, a shortwave listening radio set to AM and go on the frequency that your radio's on that has this broadband noise or that spike that spur set your radio up right on that frequency and walk around the house and see if you're able to replicate it i like to leave the antenna all the way down and in the radio um and just walk around that's i've done videos on that as well many videos talking about that the process to track it down is the same inside your home it's very easy to track noise down inside your home at least i think so the problem is when uh, you got to go outside your home Right. And again, I'm, I'm adding these caveats to the point of you've already done an effective ground, uh, an effective job grounding your station. So you're still going to need to go through the whole process of getting the ground rods bonded uh, right to who, whomever your service provider is or the, the ground, your your 
base ground rod that's connected to your panel where the power comes in, the power service comes in. You got to bond all that stuff together, right? Oh, you don't have a ground rod. You know, those are the things I'm talking about. And that's not easy, by the way. I appreciate that. That's that, that's not the easiest part of anybody's ham career is like, okay, now I got to figure out how to ground all this stuff. But again, I will mention, link is in the description to Ham Radio TV's video that he did um, with the representative that, that ran through all the NEC, kind of the NEC recommendations, which when you start thinking about it, it, it makes a lot of sense. So, uh, yep. So keep in mind that the, yeah, although it may display itself differently on the screen, Again, going back to uh, to my, my screen here. Yeah, you can see all kinds of stuff, and they display differently, but what is it? It's still a noisy generator of common mode currents. So um, outside of it being a leaky power line from, you know, whomever your power provider is. By the way, I've dealt with that too. I did a video on that as well, talking about what I did uh, to handle that. Your mileage will vary. I appreciate that. Not all power companies are as, are as good as Southern California Edison, I feel. But it doesn't matter what the characteristics of the noise looks like. It really matters that you should just go and track them down, right? Uh, let's see. There was a super chat. Sean Mahoney says, is it possible to actually measure the amount of common mode current in a wire? slash feed line, for example, with some type of clamp on meter. I want to say yes. Um, I want to say you can, but boy, I'm not sure how to do it. I'm always of the mindset, like if it's there, I just do my process to excise it, go through the process and, and take care of it that way. I don't know that knowing the value of how much, um, I don't know that knowing the value of how much common mode current was on the line tells me anything in addition to what I don't already know that I want it gone, and it's just a matter of time until I find it, right? Uh, bu 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 bu. Amy Louise Herndon says, hey, Amy, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> nice that you're on here. I had an LED clock I built that was super noisy, ended up taking it to the office to, <laughs> to drag it down. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Amy, that's a hilarious point. Um, let me let me go down one slide here. I think I've got, I think I've got like one or two more. Yeah. Um, in fact, I think I need to update this one. So I, I want to I want to give an anecdote an anecdote on on this. Um, but let me see if I can. There it is. Wonder if this will update. Will it update? There it is. Okay, let's see if it'll update on the screen. Hopefully it will. Um, can I do that? There it is. Okay, let me go back. Okay, so th this story. Amy said she made a clock, and the clock spit out a bunch of common mode current. Um, yeah, so there was a there was there was interference that was getting created in the same space that uh, car dongles uh, work on. Oh, and Jerry's there too. Hey, Amy, thanks for thanks you and Jerry for watching. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so the the car dongles, everybody in this neighborhood, they they couldn't they couldn't get their car dongles to work. Their dongles stopped functioning. And they ended up calling in the help of like hams and um, a bunch of other people. The FCC got involved, and they they were <laughs> they're scouring up and down this this neighborhood trying to find the problem. And eventually, they found an older gentleman's home. Knocked on the door because the the noise was in the house. They knocked on the door. He came to the door, and, and they tracked it down to a home built doorbell that he had made. And what it was doing was he would push the doorbell or someone would push the doorbell button and it would go downstairs to the basement where he hung out um, and it would illuminate a light. So he was a little bit hearing impaired. So we used that as a way to notify him that someone was at the door. Well, apparently that thing was just constantly blanketing the entire uh, neighborhood with, with, this com with RFI. And largely it was probably that wire acting like an antenna doing that. So kind of a, a funny anecdote. It happens, right? It happens. And I would argue that even though there are many, a myriad of laws and rules governing um, how electronics are produced and how things are manufactured, there's still just so many noise creators out there. And how do you police them all, right? It, it's, it's very difficult for any government entity, I don't care how powerful or oppressive your government is that you have that much control, you could actually do this um, for, for electrical devices like these. It's very difficult. So keep that in mind. Uh, here are three of my uh, most maligned noise creators in my home. So the first one is, and all of these things, love my wife. These were all brought into the house by my wife. 
The first one is a power adapter that's used for a small um, clock at the kids use, which is, you know, kids got to tell time, particularly when they're in school, when we're doing school at home and they've got to change, you know, classes or, you know, need to know when they, they're on break time or whatever. The middle one, that is affectionately the lamp that, that we always talk about on the podcast with my wife and I. That is the lamp. That is what it looks like. It's a daylight lamp. It's got a tiny little strip. It doesn't even need it. A tiny little thing um, that you, you press. And that thing just blows out the entire band um, when, when that's on. And then last, this massage chair for some reason. When it's on, not even functioning. Not even functioning. It spits out a ton of noise. So, yeah, that's uh, those are those are the, my three largest noise generators in the home. And I have tried uh, ferrites, toroids on the lamp many times. Doesn't do anything. Lamp don't care. Nobody can stop lamp. Um, unalive all touch lamps. That's right. We need to uh, we need to re- remove their their sensory capability of touch all lamps and the the clock there that was creating rfi but then i put that small diameter uh toroid on it and that took care of it so great that that worked out just fine um oddly enough let me let me show you that i have a couple more of those right here so this is my some palomar run that i did they did a little combo pack where you could get uh, mix 43 61 77 toroids and I just used uh, the 43. I know these are these are the nickel metal um, version that you would use for making ununs and balans and whatnot. They're a little bit smaller, and that was the purpose of why I bought them. They were also on sale, so you don't need to twist my arm. But um, yeah, so these guys are. You can get these too with um, little little small donuts. A little bit easier to work with. Again, these are for ununs uh, and balans, but um, in a pinch you can use it for for um, RFI suppression. So yeah, keep that in mind. Okay. Hey, Evan, thank you for the super chat. Unalive all the touch lamps. Thank you. All right, what time is it? We got a couple of minutes before the next giveaway, and thank you everybody for um, for joining us over on the Discord for the giveaway. We will be doing an after chat, so if you want to hop over there and talk, talk shop, ask your ham radio questions. If you're new, that's the best time to join us because we take newcomers' questions first and we go down the list. James Hannibal. I'm not I'm not too far away from that idea, but just put the whole living room in a Faraday cage. <laughs> I might have to. Let's see. What else? Um, okay. Let me show you that antenna that I'm using to track down noise. I will hold on one second. Dooby dooby doo. I'll probably do some Q&A here at the end because I, I ran through the slides and that was pretty much all I needed to talk about. Sometimes less is more. K9KMV, the unlucky ham. Thank you so much for the super chat, buddy. I appreciate it. Let's go back to the overhead really quick. Um, and I want to show you what I'm using to track down RFI. Okay. So this is... You see that? Yeah, you can see it. This is the W6 LVP magnetic loop. This is a matching box for the two leads, and this is a 20-inch little... It's a 20-inch piece of metal that I have connected to it. Just ground uh, wire, basically, that I have connected to the loop. This is like a non-resonant loop antenna, okay? And into that, I feed uh, a power supply. Uh, Sorry, preamp. This is a preamp. This, you feed it 12 volts... Um, connect it to your radio. This one is set for BNC. I go SO239 to BNC. And then I take this with my 705 and just walk around um, with it. It will give you decent distances, um, about 20 to 30 feet or more. Um, that would be what I would, uh, I would estimate it as. And obviously if it's a very loud, uh, signal, you're going to pick that up very easily and it's just it's just put on a 
what is this a two by one <laughs> not even a half by a uh, piece of scrap wood so I walk around like a uh, nerd Gandalf and and go and, and search down search down for RFI in the neighborhood and say you shall not pass as I knock on their door and say can I put donuts on your power supply your power lines so yeah that's what I'm using okay we are one minute from the discord giveaway will this just work if I do this let's see and <laughs> that did not work <laughs> <laughs> that did not work at all. I I'm serious, man. I'm like Nerd Gandalf. Get out there and and get it done. Twenty seconds for the next winner for the uh, the two signal sticks. So hopefully everybody. Two hundred and seventy one people on this uh, on this giveaway. Oh man, we're still having people joining right at the end. One second. Jake, KC9TSF, and Wookie the Dude, <laughs> you both won uh, uh, Signal Stuff Signal Sticks. And that these are great because I'm just going to send you a coupon code, and that's how we're going to get it done. So that's that's exactly how this is all going to happen. So that's, that's wonderful. All right. What do I want to do here? I am going to bring up the Zoom. Let's see if this works. So if anybody has a, a question, we'll do it live. Uh, we'll be zooming for a little bit, and then we'll go over to the Discord for the after chat. I just dropped the link in the comments, so if anybody wants to join me on Zoom, now would be the time. Just get this screen sorted out. All right. Devin, if you want to bring up your audio or. Yes, this is Devin. You got a uh, video or no? I don't know why you people want to see me. No. <laughs> How's it going, Devin? Good. How are you today? Good, good. What's going on? N not much. I'm uh, sitting here looking at my HF station, hoping someone would talk to me. Oh. <laughs> well, go on uh, Go on 14.290 right now and see if they're out there, the Wii 4 DX I've been guys. calling the last couple minutes but haven't heard anybody, but I'll turn it back on and well, see Well, wait for them do. to call. You can't hear them? I can't hear anybody. I'm in Southern Oregon. Well, that's no. Well, shoot, you should. You're pretty close. Well, you may be too close, actually. Then. Fourteen to two ninety megahertz. Two ninety. All right, let's try it. Yeah, Ghost Man DKA says, "Have you have you had or eliminated the USB cables uh, with the issues with the 705?" So this is a big thing that I don't know why people all of a sudden talking about this now. All radios have this problem, particularly portable radios on USB. Um, they all have this problem. Devin, are you? That's it. <laughs> are you you heading out or? Well, I didn't think people wanted wanted to really talk to me. They're there to oh, talk to you. Buddy. Well, you hang out. I'm going to add more people, but yeah, you're you're welcome to hang out. Will do. All right. Thanks for hopping on. No yeah, problem. Yeah, this is, this is for people that want to ask questions. I'm not saying – Devin wants to work people on the air. He's saying, hey, let's get on the air. <laughs> get in the chat with Devin. Devin, join the Discord and go on the Spots and Skeds uh, chat room. That's where people set up contacts. All right. George, Connor, you are, are you there? George Connor, are you there? Okay. Go hang out in the waiting room. Let's bring Scott. And if I see people that have like an actual thumbnail on their <laughs> on their Zoom, I, I usually have an opinion that they uh that they do Zoom. There you go. That's a, somebody who who knows Zoom. Jeez. Scott, are you there? Have like an actual thumbnail on. You're probably going to have to mute the stream. There you go. That's 
Scott, you there? Yeah, I'm here, man. How you doing? Good, good. Did you mute the stream on YouTube? Oh, that might be a good idea. Yeah, it's going to get a lot of uh, feedback. Anyway, yeah, I had a question for you. Yeah. Go ahead. Are you there? I think he muted everything. Um, so I've got a whole bunch of equipment in my studio here. And um, if I'm trying to uh, hook up, I'm trying to get on my, my HTs, I get a lot of interference with these things, depending on which uh, radio I'm using. So should, should I possibly maybe put on some ferrites on every single one of my uh, different cords coming out, like my speakers, all, all kinds of other stuff? I mean, should I just go get like a collection of these things and start slapping them on everything to kind of quiet the noise down a little bit? Um, well, I suggest you do what, what I mentioned doing before you start dropping a bunch of cash. Uh, it may just be one or two devices. Kill the power on your house and then turn your radio on. Did all that noise go away? If it did, then it's not in your home. If you still have the noise, um, as you start, then you start going circuit by circuit. So let me let me go back a step. You turn off all the power, noise goes away. That means it's in your home. So you go circuit by circuit, right? You turn one on, check your radio. Is there noise? No. Turn that circuit off, turn the next one on. Check your radio. Is there noise? Ah, there's noise. And it's that room that you're in right now, possibly. And then you start disconnecting stuff. And once you disconnect something and that noise goes away, ah, you found a contributor of the RFI. That's the thing that you need to put into quarantine, put a ferrite on, do whatever it is you need to do. But just getting, well, I love the idea of just getting ferrites and throwing it on everything like Oprah. You get a ferrite and you get a ferrite. Uh, it's probably best if you if you had a little bit more tactics uh, going after these noise generators. I think you're listening to me on YouTube. You're not listening to the Zoom, are you? You are? Okay. So now you're muted. I hope that helps, though. All right. Well, hang tight. Um, Scott, you're welcome to stay in there. Evan, what's going on, man? Hey, not too much, Josh. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Thank you very much. How's it going? Oh, thank I'll you for the super chat, too. Appreciate <clears throat> that. Yeah, for sure, man. I was just hopping in to hang out because RFI is basically my entire existence with ham radio. So I thought it'd be fun to hop on here and say, hey. <laughs> I, I think that, you know, like the, the, the golden age of ham radio where people were building ham radios like out of devices and stuff like that. That must have been a great time because even though those radios were relatively not as good as they are today, obviously, there was no other electronics out there creating all these problems. So we've turned from these uh, radio builders into people that are just constantly scouring the home for, for these nasty little RFI creators. It's, it's very funny to me. Yeah, it's um, <clears throat> I mean, that's one of the biggest advantages to go in portable. Honestly, is just to drop your freaking noise floor. <laughs> that's literally my favorite. One of my favorite parts about it, um, because it, it never fails how much diligence I walk around. I mean, I'm I mean, you and I are probably in the same boat. I feel like I'm having to kill the main breaker on my house and go around it with a fine tooth comb about every quarter. Yes, yeah. it's, it's silly quarter of an hour right that's generally my... <laughs> basically every time i turn the radio on i'm like ah oh, crap where's this what what uh what fresh heck is this <laughs> yeah exactly i uh gosh what I, I do i do have a couple of comments on that though so i i do love the hot portable situation where you go out to an unknown area and it's just beautiful and you, you're having a great time the reality though is some of those portable locations also have a lot of rfi some parks are yeah. close to easeways for high tension wires or or power line runs and you just get into a spot where you get a ton of this rfi and you're like well shoot what the heck do i do it's it's a real pain um when we went out to that ranch that camp out we did a couple of months ago that worked great because the noise was super super low but uh, summit sites right summits on the air yeah. oftentimes very quiet but if you go to one of those summit sites where there's a lot of uh, radio equipment right there could be a ton of rfi so it, it 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 it's almost like even in the the great secluded wilderness you still get into a, a place where there's lots of rfi 
So this doesn't work for everybody in every situation, but um, I have had that happen where I go to a, a nice big park and go to set up and find out that there's some failing insulator on a telephone pole or something like that right where I'm about to set up. So yep. um, since having HF in my car and a portable HF radio, I will have that on on 20 meters and 40 meters and like park my car and see what the noise floor is before I unload all my crap and put antennas up. That's and that is that idea. is that has saved my bacon at least twice now. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet it has. I think your microphone's a little close. It's either you or somebody else. That's is there anybody else on here? I think it's just you and I. Your microphone's a little close to your. You get the yeah. fader action going on. Sorry, no my bad. It happens. That's that's the new normal now. Is everybody's? We're all audio experts on on live stream, collab <laughs> things now. Uh, Greg K five, did you get your uh, K five KEV? Did you get it sorted out? Your audio? I'll add Brian and 2MPM, too. And I am monitoring the chat room as well, so if anybody drops a chat comment, I'll see it if you have any questions. And again, we are going to go to Discord after this, so not much longer here on the Zoom. I just wanted to see if we could grab a couple of quick questions. What are we are already on Discord. Okay, hi. Hi, Brian. Uh, mute the whatever that is in the background. <laughs> I think you got a radio on in the background. Gunner Renee, thank you for the the super chat. With ferrites on your feed line, watch the heat. Um, possibly. So, I I have I run power. Um, I have tons of ferrites and toroids on all my feed lines and all that stuff, and I I have not had a problem. Now, if you're talking about an active filter or something like that, yes, th then you do have to be mindful of uh, of the heat that they can pick up. Brian, are you there? I'm going to mute again. i got a radio on just in case it's back. Do you have a question or anything? No, I just saw you Zoom link, and I have Zoom on another machine, oh. so I got Discord right. in one place and this on another. Well, we'll just catch up with, we'll catch up with you on Discord then because uh, this is really just for people that have questions right now. So we'll, we'll catch up on Discord. Thanks. I'll talk to you over there. Yeah, a reminder, we are going to Discord after that. Greg Scott, final chance. Did you get your uh, audio? Do you have a question? Hey, Josh, can you hear me? I can. I realized I wasn't feeding my video to any of you on the Zoom. So, yeah, I can hear you. What's up, man? <laughs> okay, no, 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 no. Um, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I just uh, got my general license. I'm kind of playing around with uh, high, high, uh, HF now. And, um, yeah, just so I, I have a G90 and kind of making some contacts and, um, I hear all kinds of noise, but I don't, I, I just figure that's, um, part of it, <laughs> you know, so, um, it, it shouldn't no. be part of it and you can do yeah. things actively to suppress that noise. And I want to remind everybody again, good shack grounding is going to be your first line of defense. Good shack grounding is paramount, but then going around your house and cleaning up these nasty electronics is also going to be a value. So make sure you do that too. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, congrats yeah, on your general. I like that and what's that? Congrats on your general. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, I, I plan on doing some 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 poda, um, getting out in the parks, and I do have a little bit of land that I'd like to go out there and try it, and so I can see the difference between you know being in my little shack here and um, actually being out where there's no RF mm -hmm. interference. Um, but yeah, yeah. I appreciate everything you're doing. I appreciate it. Thank you. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, sir. Uh... Thanks for hopping on. Uh, we're over time, but we've got two people in, so I'll just I'll just let them both in. We're getting dangerous. George and the Rogue Skunk, or is that the Rouge? The Rouge Skunk. <laughs> it's Rouge Skunk. Let's get a shot. You guys uh, have comms. Got your mics on. Hey, Jeeper Creeper, thanks so much. Appreciate you uh, with the comment. Good topic and great live. Thank you. <laughs> People are bailing out. They're like, I don't want to be out here. Uh, Roge Skunk, are you there? <laughs> okay. Uh, K5NAR is joining, but that's all right. I think we'll just leave it at that. Guys, go join us over on the Discord if you couldn't get this all sorted out. Discord's really easy. It's a voice component 
to Discord. It's also a chat. If you don't want to do voice, that's cool. You can just chat and talk uh, via the chat, and we'll answer. So, Okay, good. Anyway, are you there? I see your chat. Rogue is spelled R-O-G-U-E. Are you there? Okay. Yeah, never mind. Take it easy. We'll catch you on Discord. <laughs> All right, let's go back over here. Well, thanks, everybody. We went over time a little bit. I value your time, uh, so we'll just wrap with that. Thanks again. I appreciate it. But before I go, this was a patron picks episode. So and if you didn't like this topic, the best thing to do is to join the patrons uh, over here on the link is in the description for the Hammer to Crash Course patrons. And you can vote on the topic that we do. First topic of every month is a patron picks episode. I It was a dead heat between this and and crossband repeat mobile setup. So, uh, if you wanted to have that win, go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, consider joining the Patreon to support the uh, Hammer to Crash course. With that said, we're gonna go over here. Ooh, the chat's all funky over here. Looks kind of cool. Huh. All right. Thank you, patrons. Really do appreciate it. Uh, Ro yeah, so I, I hope I'm not Roo Skunk or Roo Skunk is in the uh, in the chat right now. Said I forgot I had a mic. I uh, I hope I'm not. It's Rouge, right? Rogue is spelled R O G U E. But anyway, it could be intentional or not. I don't know. But anyway, big thank you to the patrons. You guys, this was the episode you voted for, so I hoped you liked it. The newsletter went out last week. And um, this is a big month, obviously, because we have field day coming up. Uh, a lot of interesting things going on. I really, really, really recommend for everybody that is going to be participating in Field Day, if you're doing it with a club, great. Get involved. Make sure you understand what you need to do. Uh, if you are bringing a radio, make sure you understand they know you're bringing a radio and what antennas you may have at your disposal so they can add it to their to their planning. I talked about that on the podcast with my wife on Thursday that you really do need to plan the band handling, which person is going to be on the band, when they're going to be on the band. All that stuff is very important in in balancing out multi-station operator within a single space. But if you just want to lone wolf it or go somewhere with a buddy, now's a really good time to dust off your equipment if you've got solar panels or batteries, you want to run alternate power, that kind of fun stuff. Lay it all out, maybe make a little checklist, make an you know, get a little legal pad and start writing down the equipment. Take a look over it. Make sure you got some backups for things like coax connectors, all that fun stuff. And I would recommend, if you can, put it all up on the air tomorrow or sometime next week. And uh, yeah, make sure you can you can get on the air because nothing is worse than like going to a destination activation for field day and realized you forgot some vital piece of equipment. It's a super pain in the bun in the butt. So. Thank you, patrons. Thank you, Brew Crew. I want to tag up really quick on the Fruitlands. I did finish this um, Mai Tai edition. This is a, a, a lighter beer. I think it's like 5%. This does taste like a Mai Tai. It has orange, lime, and pineapple fruits in it. But what's great about this is it's not like a fruity sweet beer. Somebody mentioned a, a Lambic uh, earlier in the chat. Not a Lambic at all. It's, it's more like a goes, but it's a goes that isn't sweet. It does taste like a Mai Tai. Oddly enough, it's it's pretty good. You can get this at Trader Joe's. So, yeah, there's a there's a tip. Okay, all right, I am done here. We're gonna go have some fun. If you are interested, make sure you get over on Ham Tactical for the new Field Day 2021 shirts. If you order now, by the way, if you order now, you have a chance to get it in time. But you need to order soon because this is a print on demand system. And if they're not doing a batch and you don't make it on that batch, you'll make the next round or whenever they're printing again, um, It's you might not get it. So if you're thinking about it, this might be the time. I'm curious, too. What colors does it come in? Is it just white? Oh, oh. okay, so natural. Natural is pretty cool. Sport gray. I may have to go sport gray because I'm so sporty. All right, guys, I'll pull you out with some memes. Let's catch you over on the Discord. Hope you join us. Thanks.
And if you're still watching, Amy and Jerry, thanks so much for being on Animation. It was great to talk to you guys again. I hope to see you in at Huntsville. Hope to see you all at Huntsville. It's going to be a lot of fun. And there's that white box. I, I still don't know why that happens. I've contacted Streamlabs and be like, why is there this white box? I just have pictures. It's only pictures. I've scoured for pictures. I'm waiting to see one of the new memes. Huntsville! Jeepers Creeper. Jeepers Creepers. I don't know why I said that. Jeeper Creeper. It's Huntsville, man. Hey. Oh, Amy, they're still in the chat. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying the memes. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Thanks, Amy and Jerry. That was cool. Yeah, that was... Uh, you know, it's, you only have an hour, and we spend so little time with every segment. It's, we never spend enough time with anybody, I always feel. But it's good to talk to you. Huntsville? Huntsville, huh? No picture is more accurate than that one for the bands. No picture. I, I, I don't know how it was fantastic. Anyway, I'm heading over to Discord.